Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little project we're going to be working on for a viewer, and what I've got here is a uh, Golden's Foundry uh, cane mill. This is a number one cane mill. It's actually a pretty old one. I think it dates back to the late 1800s. And this is an item that actually belongs to a viewer uh, down in the Tallahassee, Florida area. And uh, he asked if I could do a little job to help him out on it. I've worked on several of these cane mills in the past. Down here in my part of the world, uh, it was a very traditional thing for farmers and farm families back in the day to grow sugar cane. And then they would take that sugar cane, crush it, uh, extract the juice out of it, and they would boil it down into a syrup. And uh, that was what they used as a sweetener. Uh, it was used kind of like syrup or molasses. It's very similar to molasses, although molasses is a different product altogether. But um, what I've got here, or what we're going to be doing today, is making a little modification to this to kind of fix an issue that he's got. Let me zoom you in here, show you a little bit about a cane mill if you're not familiar with them, and show you what we got to do to it. We're going to take this thing apart and see if we can get this thing fixed. So the way this would have worked is they would have mounted this up on a, a post or uh, something sticking up out of the ground. It would usually be about the height that it is right now. And then up on top of this, this uh, little piece here, a pole, a limb off of a tree, a piece of timber, or something like that went into it, stuck out several feet out in one direction. And uh, it would basically you would tie a mule to that. The mule would walk around in a circle and in the process it would turn this whole cane mill and cause all the rollers uh, to roll in there. Uh, interestingly, the guy that uses uh, this one, he uh, has the pole coming off of it. And, but instead of using a mule, he uh, has his mother get out there on a golf cart and just drive around in circles, and that's what powers it. Uh, people get real creative on, on repurposing these. This was originally a mule-powered uh, cane mill. The uh, way it worked is, is uh, this little piece here mounts right here. we got a broken bolt. I need to get that out. Uh, but the sugar cane would be fed in through these holes here on the side. Uh, there's two different places you can feed it in. And there's basically just three rollers in here. Again, when this thing's turning, I see it's actually going to turn in this direction. It would pull the cane in between these two rollers on the front side. And uh, you would adjust these. The first roller here would be loose enough that the cane could get started into it. And then on the back side back here, there's actually a second roller. This one would be um, adjusted in a little bit closer because it would already have been crushed and it would continue crushing that cane. And in the process of doing that, it basically just squeezes all of the juice or the majority of the juice out of that sugar cane into a liquid. The liquid then kind of just goes down into the bottom of this. And uh, over here on the side, you got a spout. And out of that spout, you would catch the cane juice. The cane juice would then go over to a kettle where they had a fire going, and they would just basically uh, boil it down, evaporate out most of the water until you got down to uh, the syrup. And basically the same way they make sugar. Uh, they just continue uh, boiling it down even further until they get all of the moisture out, and uh, you end up with raw sugar uh, um, when you do that. Uh, it was a southern thing that was very common where you could grow sugar cane up in uh, North Georgia, North Alabama, Tennessee, kind of up in the Appalachians. Uh, it was a little bit too far north to grow sugar cane. Sugar cane is more of a, uh, it's a very, it, it likes a long, hot uh, summer. It doesn't take to cold very well, but up in those parts of the world, they would grow um, cane, or it was a sweet sorghum. It was a type of sorghum uh, that had a sweet, thing in it, same process, you would crush it, boil it down, and in that case make sorghum syrup, which is a very similar type material as a cane syrup. So anyway, now that you know a little bit about a three roller cane mill, uh, let me show you what we got to do with this one and what's going on. So here's what we got to do on this one. Um, again, the cane comes in on this side, it goes past this roller, then goes past this roller. There's this piece right here, and this is a, a, a scraper, I think is what they called it. And basically what it did is it just kind of guided the cane uh, from the first roller to the second roller. The problem they've got with this one is, is that it's got some play in here and it kind of moves forward. It leaves a gap in between these two rollers and the cane is getting stuck 
in here. So uh, there's a stop down here in the bottom to kind of hold it back, but there's nothing to keep it from going forward in there, or it may be worn out. We're just gonna have to get in there and see what it is. I'm going to kind of make a modification to this so that this goes down into a slot that it will keep that from moving forward, keep them up closer to these actual rollers so that it doesn't jam it. He says that every time he uses this, um, within minutes of starting, the cane will get kind of jammed between these two rollers and they basically have to back it back out and it's just been a major problem. This is a very early style cane mill. I think some of the older or the newer ones had some um, improvements that kind of made this better. Uh, and we're just gonna try to do something along those lines. So let's take it apart. I will comment here that uh, I've had this thing apart already. When he brought it in, we took it apart and I just kind of put it back together loosely. So nothing's real tight on here. It should come apart fairly easily. Uh, this piece here on the top just kind of sits down on there. It's kind of tapered where that just fits on there. Um, we got four bolts here. I'm just going to loosen these up. They should all be finger tight right now because we didn't tighten them down all the way uh, when we put this together. So let me pull these out. All right, you got the main pieces out there, the bolts out. These are the bearings, and these are actually Babbitt bearings. I've actually poured these before. I've got some videos where I've shown that, and uh, these are actually in pretty good shape. We're not going to be messing with the bearings at all on it. I believe he had these re-poured by someone else when they tried uh, refurbishing this the first time. And right here, this is a, this is a bearing again. It just kind of fits down in there. And from that, I should be able to just That is the scraper that we got to work with. And the top comes right off. Next, the rollers come out. There's one. Pull these out. They just kind of are spacers that kind of hold everything in there. Hold the top in place, rather. And then the main roller. I may have to get the gantry to pick that up. There we go. All right, now we're down to the bottom piece here. There's bearings that fit in here. I'm just gonna leave them where they go. And we can see this uh, place where that scraper fits down into. So you can see down here in this bottom, there's a little cutout where this scraper fits down into. And it should catch down in there and keep it from moving forward. You got the place in the back here. The problem that we've got is, is that it looks like it's just worn. This used to be higher up right here and over the years of use it's just kind of worn. So I think what we're going to probably do is just kind of build an area up right there. I need to I need to kind of come up with a game plan here but I'm thinking we just uh, clean that up and maybe put a couple of lines of uh, braze in there to just kind of build that up to kind of catch it to keep it from moving forward and hopefully problem solved. Uh, let me get this cleaned up and kind of come up with a game plan here. I think I got a game plan. I put this gear back in here, this roller back in here, just kind of see what kind of clearance there was up underneath this. I'm pretty sure that 
originally when this was new, there was a raised area in the front, very similar to how there is back here in the back. And somewhere along the way, it got broken off and that thing has just kind of jumped up and down on that piece in the back has kind of wore it down. So my goal is, is I want to put something back in there to just hold that piece into place. And uh, to do that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and tap a couple of holes in here, put a couple of screws in there just for some mechanical uh, gripping. And then I'm going to take um, and basically braze in a, a little raised area. Uh, but having the mechanical stuff up underneath it will kind of give it something more to grip onto and help prevent that from coming out. Uh, that's the approach I'm going to take. So uh, let's get in there. I'm going to get this cleaned up. I'll take this gear back out. I get my wire wheel out, clean that up real good. Uh, probably do a little bit of grinding in there just to get it down to some fresh metal uh, for brazing purposes and uh, drill and tap those holes. And cleaning that up a little bit kind of confirms uh, you can kind of see where that piece was in there that broke out or wore out or whatever over the years. So uh, I think we're just going to try to put that back in there. I'm going to put two screws in here and we're going to do the 5 16 18 screw. I'm going to put about one about right there. Take a center punch and just give me a hole to start with. Put another one about right there. And for 5 16 18, I've got a letter F drill bit that we're just going to drill this down to come back in and tap. And I'm just going to use a hand drill to drill this. Just kind of clean that out. And we're just going to tap these in here with a drill. I say we are. Next thing I want to do is just take a grinding disc here on my angle grinder and I'm just going to kind of get cleaned down to some base metal and also make a little rough surface in there. That'll just give some tooth for that braze to stick to and uh, hopefully help us, uh, help us out. And that is probably good enough. Now for my screws, I've just got a couple little uh, square head set screws. Again, the whole purpose of this is just to kind of give us some mechanical strength for that dam we're going to build in there um, just so that it can help. It's not going to knock out easily. Um, it's just going to give us some added strength basically. And I think we're ready to go. I'm going to get the torch out and we're going to start putting some heat in here and then braise that up. All right, I got my rosebud out here, and we're just going to start by putting some heat in this casting. It's going to take a little bit. There's a lot of mass here. I will comment that I took a welding blanket and just kind of put it up underneath it already, and uh, we'll use that to wrap it up with when we're through, and that will hopefully help prevent any heat transfer to my table, uh, keep the heat in the part. There's a lot of mass in this casting, but I am starting to see where it's kind of turning cherry red up underneath the bottom, which uh, means we're getting close to brazing temperatures. In fact, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of start here. Brazing is the process of using uh, dissimilar materials. Works really well on cast iron. Then, uh, trying to repair casting, etc. We're just going to get a little puddle in there going. 
and try to build that up. All right, I think we got a little bit of a dam there started. I'm gonna get some uh, heat over in this area. We are making progress. Just kind of spinning this dam on around. Got a little bit of a puddle down in there. I'm probably gonna have to grind out, but uh, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with what we got there. I'm just gonna wrap this up and we're gonna let it cool down nice and slow. Everybody's been asking about the shop cats, Ginger and Mary Ann. They are doing good. Just kind of hanging out out here, playing and being kittens. All right, guys, I think we got this pretty well brazed up now. Got some material back in there. Um, I had to kind of let it cool down from the first layer and then I kind of went back a little bit lower heat and added some more metal on top of that. I blended it all in there together. Uh, it was kind of a two-stage operation. But we've got that dam built up now to kind of hold this in place. Uh, but it's not dropping all the way down in there. I'm gonna have to grind a little bit out, which I was fully expecting to have to do. So I've got a little die grinder here, a little air-powered tool and uh, Hopefully we'll be able to get that ground out real fit. So I believe that is gonna be just a trick to hold that in place. Now that piece is not be able to move around in there very much. It just drops right down in and should keep it from coming out where that uh, cane can get caught in there. Start by dropping the big gear, our big roller rather down in there. Put these uh, barren shells back down the end and the roller goes on that side. There we go. I think that's gonna be just fine. All right. Um, let's see, we'll put our spacers back in here. There we go.
This bearing drops down in here. And our scraper should drop right back down in there and now we got something holding it in. I think that's going to be the trick. I think that's going to do it. Uh, we will put these uh, rods back in here and I think we've got this thing back together. One K mill reassembled. I think this one's gonna be ready to roll. I'm gonna give my customer a call and let them know it's ready to come pick up. Well, there you go. One more cane mill ready to go back into operation. And uh, who knows, if he's got time, he may even get this thing to be able to crush some crane, the cane this season and uh, make some syrup with this thing. So uh, hopefully this will work out for him. I think that that was just a trick to fix this scraper get it back where it needed to be. It had just had a broken piece off that casting, but uh, between the braze job and those, uh, those nuts that we put, our bolts that we put in there, those screws to give it some strength, uh, it should hold up pretty well. I'm not too worried about that braze cracking out, particularly with that mechanical um, force and their mechanical screws and they're kind of, they have something to grip a hold of. It should do just fine. And, uh, Ah, maybe this thing will last another 100 years. I think he told me this one was made in the late 1800s. So uh, definitely an antique and uh, still going strong. Uh, the Golden Foundry Company out of uh, Columbus, Georgia, number one cane mill. And uh, this one's going to go back to Florida and make some syrup. Guys, with that, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, those thumbs up and comments are appreciated. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.